Tima has 30 seconds. Launch the retro on countdown one. SpaceX, Falcon Heavy, go for launch. Falcon Heavy is configured for flight. E minus 15, stand by for terminal count. And nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, to begin to throttle down prior to booster engine cutoff and separation two and a half minutes into flight. GNC trajectory looks good on the Falcon Heavy. Reports show that the M1D engine performance is nominal. Side boosters have begun to throttle down in preparation for the upcoming shutdown in 20 seconds. Major event coming up with side booster shutdown and separation. Inside shutdown. Side boosters. Beacon. Successful separation. We're coming up on Nico and shutdown. Stay safe. Coming up on bearing separation. Center core side engines on fire, also look good. Pretty spectacular image there. The world's most powerful rocket made it 
up off the launch pad. Elon Musk had said in a press conference yesterday that uh, he wasn't nervous, that he had really high hopes for this, and uh, that he was giddy and happy, actually, and not nervous, that he took that as a good sign. They were worried that this could potentially uh, explode on the launch pad, which would take months and months and months to have to rebuild. I want to bring in CBS News correspondent Manuel Bajorquez, who's joining me now from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Manny, tell us about it. How impressive was this launch? <laughs> Well, you heard all the cheers there uh, from the control room, and we definitely heard them out here as well. Uh, these launches are always spectacular. I had been here before for a Falcon 9. That's the smaller version of the rocket, and that was impressive. But to see three of them combined and successfully lift off the pad was really something else, and it shook the entire platform that we're standing on right now. What we're still hearing is that the initial stages of this launch and of the flight appear to be successful. What's going to happen in the next few minutes is they're expecting to try to land some of those rocket boosters back on Earth. Two not far from us at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, the other one out on a barge in the Atlantic, and that will make this even more successful if they can do that. But Elon Musk had told us yesterday he would consider it a success if the uh, rocket so much as took off without a problem uh, and did not cause any damage to the pad here. So clearly uh, there are a lot of uh, happy people over at SpaceX right now watching this and watching as those further stages of flight continue. Still so magnificent to watch every time these these rockets take off. I want to ask you, Manny, though, what do they hope to achieve SpaceX? What do they want to accomplish moving forward now? Well, really, this is just to prove that they can make a more powerful rocket, that they can combine their Falcon 9s into something that is more powerful. They're also at the same time working on another rocket that would be more powerful as well, so not putting all their eggs in this basket. But really what they want to show here is that when it comes to putting bigger satellites and equipment and eventually humans deeper into space, that this is one way they can achieve that. Now, that Tesla that's in there, why, why the Tesla? Obviously, we know the Elon Musk connection. Right. Uh, you know what? He said it was just for fun. Uh -huh. He said a lot of uh, test runs on uh, rockets happen with really boring things like a chunk of concrete or something heavy on there as a payload. And we're just getting word right now. And you may be able to see this on the SpaceX feed uh, that those rockets are starting to uh, come back down to Earth, the ones that they are trying to land. Again, when you're talking about that Tesla, he said it was just for fun, just to put his own name and spin on something that he hopes will uh, reach the orbit of Mars. And again, everybody still eyes uh, to the sky here at Kennedy Space Center as we're trying to see if SpaceX can uh, successfully land three of its rockets. So it would be a first for the company. They've only been able to launch those smaller ones and land them just one at a time. But again, uh, this is going to be a big deal for them if they can do it, if they can prove that this is something not only that they can do in order to get materials and people into space, but also the reusability is a big factor for them. They feel that's the best way to lessen the cost of air uh, space travel, uh, make it more affordable, and therefore make it so that you can send more stuff and more people into space, eventually uh, possibly on a mission to Mars with some interplanetary refueling. Again, all eyes to the sky here as we see in the distance, not too far, what appears to be those two rocket boosters now slowing on their descent to Earth. It's amazing that they can control that uh, and landing on two pads at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. We are hearing right now, I'm not listening to their feed, but I can hear lots of applause. We are seeing, Manny, just applause. so you see the image, we see what I believe two uh, of them landing. Uh, right now, I believe, is that image Cape Canaveral that we're looking at right there? I believe on the left-hand side of our screen, it is Cape Canaveral. And it looks, uh, just from a, a layman's standpoint, Manny, that they were successfully able to land. It looks upright to me. What are you hearing? That's, that's what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing right now. We're hearing a lot of applause, a lot of cheers, and we actually heard some sonic booms as those uh, touched down. Uh, yes, we're hearing that the landing of those two rockets here on land was successful. So clearly, 
if Elon Musk wasn't uh, so happy with just one success here, uh, this is just another layer to add to uh, what they will be celebrating uh, this afternoon and this evening. We're still waiting to see if that other rocket uh, will successfully land on that barge in the Atlantic. I don't know if that feed is up. I think that one actually will happen even later because it's still trying to get the payload further out into space in order to make it reach its trajectory. Manny, we, we've heard they just lost the signal on that particular rocket. Tell me about the time frame, though. You said it's a little further out. Would it take several more minutes? Um, yeah, potentially. Uh, what you're talking about here is, is a rocket that once it takes off, uh, it, it starts to split apart into smaller and smaller, smaller and smaller pieces, uh, and um, has different uh, boosts, if you will, along the way. Uh, they're trying to reach a certain uh, a certain part of of orbit or get it at least headed in the right direction at the right speed at the right time. Uh, so things happen at different times here. Uh, it's unclear at this point whether we have uh, that other uh, a time frame for the other rocket at this point. It, it sounds there like you did lose that feed. Uh, but they're also looking at what is now in space to see if that will essentially make it to where they want it to successfully. Uh, and that will be something that develops over the next several hours. So Manny, we've now seen this successful launch of the Falcon Heavy rocket. This is the world's most powerful rocket. You were talking to me a little bit earlier about exactly what they hope will be next. What else is on the horizon for SpaceX? Well, they have uh, the BFR, which is the next missile that they're working on, uh, and Elon Musk did reference that. He thought uh, that might even be the next bigger, best design uh, to achieve what they want to, which is getting more things further into space. Um, but you also have other companies uh, here in the United States who are working on their own rockets. NASA is working on its own rocket, too. That one more powerful, but also more expensive. Uh, so what you really have right now is that uh, friendly competition is what uh, the government would like to view it as between the public and the private sectors to try to see who can develop the best and most affordable of course, technology uh, to bring astronauts and equipment into space. A lot of people may not know, but up to this point, we've been relying on Russia to send our astronauts to the International Space Station. And clearly, this administration and many of these companies and NASA would like to uh, be able to launch them from right here in the United States. Make a great point, man. If you're joining us just now, SpaceX successfully launching the world's most powerful rocket. And it appears those boosters have also successfully landed, at least from our vantage point down at Cape Canaveral. We are Manuel Bajorquez is there on the launch pad uh, at Cape Canaveral watching this all unfold. Manny, when you look at this, um, you talk about the reusability. Those boosters typically aren't reused. Tell me a little bit more about that and what they hope to reuse. Right. If you think about the space shuttle program, going back to when we were kids and seeing it lift off, uh, those were not reused as a one time thing. And there are still a lot of really powerful ones being developed uh, that will be a one time use type of thing. The good thing with that is that um, they are more powerful. So the payload, uh, they will be able to take more uh, heavier equipment and things into space. Uh, the trade off here is if you have a smaller one that is reusable, you may not be able to get that larger of a payload, but you'll save money in being able to reuse that rocket. Uh, so really, two, uh, you know, you can balance uh, those two things out and think, well, what's better for us? Something that's one time use and can carry more or this kind of thing uh, that is reusable. But SpaceX, SpaceX, excuse me, is also looking at uh, space tourism. And that's something that these smaller rockets may be good for. Somebody who wants to pay to maybe take a trip around the moon. Uh, SpaceX announced it does have uh, two passengers who would like to do that. Didn't reveal more about who they are. Uh, but that's the kind of thing they're eyeing here with these smaller reusable rockets as well. Yeah, and they were saying that, that this Falcon Heavy could also be a big moneymaker for SpaceX. Is that tourism and that sort of thing, Manny? Absolutely. What, what they're talking about really there uh, could be tourism down the line, but also to show uh, these companies and governments around the world that they can be trusted to put these giant multi-million dollar satellites into orbit for them, uh, that this is no longer an experimental thing, that they have one successful launch under their belts.